Cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility. That on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead. We may rise to the life of mortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is our Righteousness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks be to God. Another thing that we have been waiting for with great anticipation is for that time again in the midst of pandemic protocols when we could resume congregational singing. As I sent in a parish email previously, you'll be glad to know and celebrate today that this is our first Sunday since the pandemic began, that we can once again resume in congregational singing. Hallelujah. And uh, the only caveat, of course, is that we're still maintaining the COVID protocols of mask wearing and social distancing while singing. Our hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, that great Advent hymn, as we anticipate and wait for the coming of Christ and in this music. And I uh, encourage you to stand to sing this in church. You should have all received not only your orders of service, but um, handouts for our hymns today. So please turn to your handouts for the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Would you please stand? Your tribes are sung. 
for a few moments. She had to go off and do something and leave us unsupervised. And as she left, I guess because I'd been called on to do these other things over time, um, I was the joiner. I was the one that got up and did things. And so she said as she left, Bill, well, I'm out of the class. I want you to keep an eye on things and report to me anybody who misbehaves. <laughs> oh, my word. I wasn't entirely dumb in those days. I knew that was a death sentence. <laughs> I tried to shrink in my responsibilities. I tried to sink down in my seat and pretend the rest of the class wasn't there and keep my head down and not look at anything. But it was just too good an opportunity for some of the usual miscreants. And so a couple of the usual cast of characters um, decided that this was a perfect opportunity to create class chaos. I waited and waited and waited for that teacher to return. It was kind of like waiting for the second coming. We know she exists, but when is she coming back? And it took an inordinate length of time, at least it seemed that way, to a grade three student who was eight years old, waiting for his sentence to end. And she came back, and the class was disorderly, and she looked to me for a report. After the class was over, wouldn't you know that it was time for recess? on the playground. Out in the far corners of the playground, there is no teacher to be found. <laughs> Only students. And uh, I swear in those days that two of the students that were the most offended by my assignment were the size of grade 12 football players. <laughs> I only had one redeeming gift left in my arsenal. I could run faster than they could. And so I escaped until at last, after waiting and waiting and waiting again, the recess bell rang and we could return to class. One of my buddies made sure I had a ride home after school from one of his parents to make sure that I could escape any further calamity after school. This unpleasant childhood memory has returned to me now, I wonder why. Maybe it has something to do with the assigned role the diocese has given me of compliance manager or officer with responsibility to enforce COVID protocols during a pandemic just about as popular as my grade three assignment was all those many years ago. Why would that teacher do that to me? Why would God do this to me or any of us? We wait patiently and impatiently for the pandemic to subside. And I'm not trying to depress you any further than we already are, but of course, there is news just emerging internationally now of a new COVID variant. I, like you, have waited for the pandemic to improve to the point where we can start eliminating some of our COVID protocols. And at least that has been joined today by the announcement that we can resume in congregational singing. That gives us something to celebrate and sing about, that we are at least approaching some normality in terms of our desire and full enjoyment of participation in public worship. Advent is about waiting not only in these ways, but also in a much larger sense. One thing that Advent convinces us about is that waiting is not a passive behavior. It's not just being still. Waiting is not doing nothing. There are many activities that take place while we wait. Watching, listening, observing, thinking, praying, planning, caring, loving, and even some doing, to name just a few. 
Waiting is only ultimately rewarding if it's understood and approached as having a definite purpose and an end result in sight and intended. We know in the church and in our faith that this waiting is about waiting for the coming of Jesus. We celebrate not only in anticipation his coming long ago, over 2,000 years ago at his birth, but the ways in which he continues to come to us today and will come to us in the future. And the ways in which he continues to be present with us now, even waiting upon a pandemic. It is a belief that by waiting with purpose and belief, we will once again experience the risen Christ. That Christ is with us even in the waiting. He's not absent. And that we should always be alert and be engaged in preparations to welcome his coming. Now I'm going to ask you please just for a moment to turn again in your service booklets to Luke's gospel that we read today on page three of your service booklets, Luke's Gospel. And you'll see in there all the signs and ingredients of waiting. Luke implores in the mouth of Jesus the parable and lesson of the fig tree, signs and lessons from nature about waiting. And it is as if Luke would say in the Canadian context that Jesus would say in our context today, look at the falling leaves. Look at the bare tree branches. They alert us to the changing seasons. We shouldn't be surprised as I was. You know, I have all these signs, right? I see the leaves fall, I see the bare trees, I see the weather change, I see it getting cold. And I'm still shocked this morning when I get up that it would dare snow on a Sunday morning as I'm preparing to go to Dunster for worship. Why am I shocked? We have all the signs before us that winter's coming. It has to snow sooner or later. Today's ancient gospel points us to the very current and modern example, as you see in the first verses there, of roaring seas and waves. We call those now atmospheric rivers that gather in the sky and dump floodlight water conditions on a population like British Columbia and cause landslides and destruction. We see the signs of atmospheric change and of extreme weather. And don't we understand that this means that climate change is upon us and we need to prepare for it and to adjust our behavior accordingly. As Luke's gospel acknowledges, as you read through that gospel, this all causes distress among many people, among nations. None of this is new. We've lived through pandemic-like conditions before. And we are advised by Luke to be on guard and that we don't fall into the trap of despair caused by worry and hopelessness. Our preparation is to pray and to stay alert. And we are, we are to continue to believe that even if the entire earth and heavens were to pass away, that God's word will not pass away. And this is the most crucial part. This is what Luke wants us to remember more than anything. That when things are ending and things are being destroyed, that something else is ready to begin and to be reborn. And know that when you see these terrible signs where 
things are ending, that the kingdom of God nevertheless is near and upon us. Be alert. Pray. Have faith. For Jesus is coming and his presence draweth nigh.
to bring supreme function. And we continue remembering those in our prayers, Beverly Wessel, Linda Reed, Debbie Martin, Emma Junkin, Jerry, Doreen Crozier, Thomas Bartlett, Ann Taylor, Jean Lachance, Steve Addersley, Wendy, Wendy Watson, and Don Patterson, as well as Andrew Sinlin. Grace will curse the world. We pray for the victims of flooding and landslides in British Columbia, Cape Breton, and Newfoundland, and for victims of violence at the Waukesha, Wisconsin Christmas Parade. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayers for frontline workers. We pray for all those engaged in the administration and delivery of health care, for emergency services workers, police services, community care, personal services, home care, retirement home, and the military. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Prepare to celebrate the Holy Eucharist as hymn 88 in your service music handouts. Come the long expected Jesus. Would you please stand? Thank you. 